it's Steve, and uh, I'm gonna switch up the format a little bit. You guys might have noticed uh, that this week's videos is all one video. Oliver uh, got on my case about why don't you just make it one video? And you know, it's hard to argue with him because he doesn't talk or listen or have a brain that isn't stuffing. But he still, his opinion still matters to me. Leave me comments below if you like it just being in one video or if you like the whole separate thing. This is week six of I Hit Send Sunday, so if you guys are new, welcome. Uh, I Hit Send Sunday is a show where people ask me questions, my viewers uh, ask me questions, and I try my best to help out with what limited knowledge I have acquired uh, throughout my life. I'm really enjoying this project, so uh, thank you guys so much for writing in this week. All right, so uh, my first email is not anonymous, and it comes from a guy named Zach. You remember Zach's question, yeah? Okay, so Zach says, hey Steve, so I've never really dated anyone because when I was closeted, I felt like it was wrong to date girls and leave them on. But now that I'm out, I don't know how to date guys. Some background info about me is that I've been out since January of this year. I'm 18, I go to a big college, and I've never been with a guy. I've been messaging a few guys on Tinder, but I don't know how to take it to the next level. Whether it's asking them to hang out as friends or go out on a date. How would you bring up the idea of going out to someone, and where would you go? Any advice will help. P.S. I love your I Hit Send Sunday videos. Keep up the good work, Zach. Hey, Zach, thank you so much for saying you like these videos. I love doing them, so uh, thank you for, for saying that. You haven't dated any guys yet, and you're, and, you're, and you're doing the new age finding guys in your proximity app kind of deal, and you want to know how to bring it to the next level? Uh, don't worry, this part is easy. Make sure that this person is like a real person through like Facebook or you know something like that before you meet them. I think it helps because you can kind of get an idea if they're A, like a real person, and unless they have like a very elaborate fake social media thing. And two, you get to like, I don't know, see if you have any mutual friends, if there's someone who can vouch for them. Um, unless you know they're in the closet and you kind of have to avoid that stuff. It's really important to be safe when you're meeting people from an online app because people can lie online and people do lie online. Not just about their weight, but like about their entire persona from time to time. Always meet in a public place. Um, so I would say if you want to meet up with them, do something like go bowling. Uh, that's like in a public place. You can you can uh, you know maybe go see like a movie. That might be like a little bit too intimate for a first date, but. Yeah, maybe maybe like meet up at, for coffee at like a cafe, like by your place. That way, it's really easy because you know you can finish your drink and get the hell out of there if it's not going well, um, and you're not you know committed to like a movie or a game of bowling when you realize that this person is like a trash pile instead of a potential date. <laughs> Any activity that's uh, public. Me and my boyfriend's first date was rock climbing at like the YMCA, which I would highly recommend. That was like super fun because. Nobody looks cool rock climbing. I don't know, like the people who are really good at it do, but like most people don't look cool rock climbing. You have that weird harness that like pushes your junk out and like it's just awkward, but it's fun if you're with the right people. So that would be my suggestion. Check out rock climbing, very fun stuff. Okay, I realized in editing, I didn't answer your question as to like how to ask somebody to meet up or whatever. Bite the bullet, you know? Uh, I, I don't really know any like good lines but yeah, just ask. Just be confident and be like, hey, I feel like we're getting along. Let's go like get a coffee or go bowling or go rock climbing. <laughs> Definitely go rock climbing. Rock climbing is dope, really. Okay, now, now on to the next question. So this person asked to remain uh, anonymous, and so you're homie from now on. And homie says, uh, I would like to remain anonymous. And homie says, hi, what's your opinions on circumcision? I'm 22, I'm from the UK, and having to be circumcised for medical reasons. It's not common for men in the UK to be circumcised, and I'm a bit scared men won't like it. And tips and advice would be greatly appreciated. I was born in the US, so it's very commonplace to be circumcised, so I, I am circumcised. That feels so weird to tell the internet. The drawback to being circumcised is sensitivity, because our glands are exposed all the time. And so we sacrifice sensitivity for the aesthetic, I guess, of a circumcised penis. It sounds like you don't have much of a choice in the matter. Or matter, rather. Not manner. This isn't like penis manner. Although that would be a pretty sweet show. Uh, it's very rarely just about your penis. Uh, as long as you're bringing more to the table than just, uh, you know, um, the bomb dick. The only thing that's going to really change about your penis is that your glands are going to be exposed and uh, aesthetically it'll be different. 
But besides that, it'll still be the same penis, you know? It's not like they're giving you a new one. Uh, if, it, if it's worked for you up until this point, it'll continue to work for you. Uh, you might notice some decreases in sensitiv uh, sensitivity. I know it's gonna be like painful as all hell, so good luck with that, because that's gonna suck. But besides that, I wouldn't worry about people like saying no to your penis because it's circumcised. Someone's gonna find your penis beautiful. You just have to find the right person. Um, and if they say that it's a no-go because you don't, your penis is circumcised, unless they're really into foreskins, it shouldn't be a problem. So, you know, don't stress about it too much, I would say, you know, and just enjoy your equipment, uh, it, however it, however it is clipped or unclipped. I just thought of this, uh, for the circumcision thing, I have to add this. Uh, lube, you're gonna have to use lube now. Apparently, when you have foreskin, like, lube isn't, like, super important when having sex. But, uh, now that you're gonna be circumcised, uh, you're gonna want to stock up on lube. Moving on. Okay, this comes, this comes from a guy named Smith. And, uh, he said, Hey, Steve, my name is Smith. I love your series of I Hit Send Sunday. Thank you. That, that's awesome. I know this might have been answered already, but I want some advice on this issue. I met this guy uh, over a year ago, and I fell madly in love with him. It was love at first sight. He's perfect in, every, in everything I ever wanted in a boyfriend. The only problem is that we sometimes talk here and there, and I recently told him how I felt about him, and he told me he doesn't feel the same, but the times that we've talked, or I've seen him, he acts different and shows that he cares. But he said he's in love with somebody else, and he doesn't have feelings for me the same way I do for him. I don't know if I should leave it be, or move on, as it's hard to be friends with someone you are madly in love with, who loves someone else. What should I do? Please help me. Kind regards. Uh, Smith, dude, I, you know, this is going to be a difficult thing to say, but he straight up told you he wasn't interested. Um, no matter what his reasoning is, uh, you know, whether he's in love with somebody else, um, what you should be taking away from this is that he does not feel the same feelings that you feel for him. You're in love with him, so it's really hard to kind of take that at face value, and you're looking for anything that he's saying or doing that could possibly be interpreted as he has some kind of attraction to you. Um, but what you're doing to yourself is you're torturing yourself. And I've done this, and I'm sure everyone watching this video has done this, where we fall in love with somebody, we get a direct answer, and we're still like holding on to hope. It's not good for you. It's not good for your self-esteem, because you'll be constantly questioning yourself and thinking, well, I'm just not good enough. What can I do to be better so that he'll love me? And you're probably not doing anything wrong. You're just not this guy's type. It's not fair to yourself, and it's not fair to him either. It doesn't mean that you're not dateable. Even though you think this guy is perfect in every way for you, he's not. Nobody's perfect for another person. You actively have to make it work. It doesn't just happen where, you know, everything falls into place. It, you know, relationships take effort. And this guy isn't willing to put in any. But you are, and it's a wasted effort. I'm sorry if that's not what you wanted to hear, but I'm always going to answer honestly, and honestly, it sounds like you have to move on. This guy, this guy was clear. Okay, and the last one of today, uh, and Simon says, <laughs> uh, Simon says, uh, hi Steve, my question, do you, how do you stay so positive when confronted with hate? Uh, in the video, hate speech makes me so horny, <laughs> you counter the homophobic preachers with humor. When I hear hateful things like that, it takes all my power not to punch the person responsible. It makes me so mad my blood boils, I can never do what you did in that video. Do you have some advice to help control my anger towards homophobes? Yes. It's admitting that a punch in the face doesn't cure hateful people. If anything, reacting with hate to people who produce hate only makes the problem worse. You have two divided sides of people that you don't agree with and people who don't agree with you. And guess what? That's always going to happen. So you can't you can't react in a hateful way because you're just as bad as them at that point. You can't beat sense into these people. Uh, you know they they are as convinced that they are right as you are convinced that you are right. The best way to meet hate and ignorance is to not internalize it, to not get angry about it, but to accept that it's going to be there until these ideas change, until the world changes. And if we are actively internalizing what they're doing, then they're winning. So you can't let them win. If they're inspiring you to feel bad, um, or feel hate, or feel anger, that's exactly what they're setting out to do. So uh, by mocking it, by laughing at it, by not internalizing it, and, 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 and just knowing that you're doing the right thing and that they are wrong, that should be enough. You kind of just have to say to yourself one day, am I going to let this get to me? And the answer should be no. You should, you should be vigilant about not letting people's bullshit get to you because you have a life to live and like water off a duck's back, 
stupid motherfuckers should just roll off. They should just roll off because, you know, you should know in your head they're wrong and pfft. So when you see me mocking these people, when you see me laughing at these people and making a joke about it, it's because I know that they're wrong and I can't let people who are wrong get to me. I'm not gonna beat sense into them. I'm, I'm just gonna laugh. I'm gonna laugh and be like, wow, shit, you're wrong. You're just like super, super wrong and I'm still gonna live a happy life. Meanwhile, you're dedicating your time just to produce heat in the universe. What a wasted life. And that's how you kind of have to see it. Um, to let it, you know, roll off your back. Just know that you're doing the right thing. Are you happy? Are you, you know, are you able to live your own life? Yes, you can do those things. And that's it. So this was, uh, this was week, week six of I Hit Send Sunday. Uh, tell me you guys what you think about the one solid video. I'm a fan because it's less work for me, but if you guys like the episodic things, I can still do that. I just wanted to try this out this week. Um, and I want this program to evolve. So guys, thank you so much for sending in emails. Anyone who wants to be featured on next week's episode, or episodes, depending on how the comments go. Uh, uh, let me know. Send me an email at I hit send inquiries at gmail.com. Or maybe it's this way. I don't know. But either way, uh, please hit me up. Uh, we look forward to reading your emails. Thank you guys who wrote in this week. Um, and thank you for staying tuned. I'll catch you guys later. All right. Bye.